Hey, let's check out the best new features in macOS Ventura. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. Here, I'm gonna walk you through my favorite new features in an overview of macOS Ventura. macOS 13 is set to release this fall and has a ton of new features for users. So I'm gonna walk you through my favorite ones that I have been playing around with since I've got it installed on my uh, MacBook Air here. So let's go ahead and dive into it. These are my favorite features in macOS 13 Ventura. If any of you out there are like me, you likely are using a third-party mail application on at least one of your devices. Personally, I've used Spark on my Mac for a number of years, and it's been great. And one of the reasons why is because Apple's mail application, well, good, was missing a lot of key features, and Apple has taken a big step towards correcting that with macOS 13 Ventura. So the biggest thing is search actually works. If you've tried searching in mail before, you may have noticed you'll type something and it just won't come up. It'll see you have nothing from them or they're just out of order. All sorts of weird things. Apple has completely rewritten search and it actually works now. So I am so excited by this. They're able to kind of see um, correct things that you put in. So there's like autofill and autocorrection. It is really fast to actually search through. Look how fast these Netflix results came up it's been really very nice. So there's been a huge update to how search is working within Mail, a big upgrade to that. Additionally, there are other features like the ability to schedule a message being sent, reminders to send or reply back to a message, and the ability to undo a recently sent message. Say I've got my Netflix email here, I can swipe to the right, you can see that unread, I can mark it as unread, but keep swiping, you can see I have that new remind me button. So if I click on that, I can remind myself to check back to that in an hour, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, or just at a later date. So hit remind me and I can choose a date and time that I'd like to be reminded. I really want to be reminded about Anchorman on Netflix probably tonight. So I'm gonna click that right there and it's gonna go ahead and remind me tonight about that email. So I'm gonna create an email to myself and I'm gonna go ahead and send this. But now I have new options. I can send now, just send it as normal. I can send tonight, so it's got pre-designated fillers, so 9 p.m. tonight, 9 p.m. tomorrow, or I can choose again a date and time that suits me. So I'm gonna hit send later, pick a date and time, whatever I choose, go ahead and cancel that, and it'll schedule up at that time. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and send this email. Now, that email's been sent, but if you notice in that lower left-hand corner, I have the ability within a few moments to hit undo send, and it'll recall that email, and let me make some final changes before it gets going. Another great uh, change here inside a mail is the ability to alert you if you didn't include a person in the to line, or if you didn't attach uh, an attachment you meant to. So I'm gonna say, um, take a look at this spreadsheet. Perfect. And as I go to send it, now I have an alert saying, did you forget to add your attachment? Because there's no attachment on this email. So it's able to use on-device recognition to understand that I meant to have an attachment and alert me before I actually send it. Finally, there are rich links. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste a link here inside of the email and boom, just like that, it actually transforms that boring, just plain text URL into this great rich link. So you can see the title of this article, the domain it's hosted on, and that header image that goes along with it. This happens to have been a recent review that I published. It's really cool to see all that in email and it looks a whole lot better. Now I can go ahead and send it on its way. If I could just interrupt myself for one moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Jamf. Jamf is the de facto standard in Apple mobile device management, and it's trusted by more than 62,000 businesses, schools, and hospitals. Apple's exceptional hardware is only half of the equation. How you secure, manage, and empower your users with that technology is the other half, and Jamf makes that happen. Jamf has the ability to scale to any business, whether you've got just a handful of iPhones or iPads or tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, or Apple TVs, Jamf can be your solution. 
Jamf is ready to scale to any size business. Whether you've got a handful of iPads or you have tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs, Jamf can be the solution. Recently, it introduced app installers, which is an automated way for IT teams to update third-party Mac apps when a new version is released. Jamf automatically sources, packages, and deploys the new versions, ensuring users have the latest features and security patches. On a personal note, I've actually had the opportunity to sit down with several organizations that have rolled out Jamf MDM solutions in their businesses, and they have always spoken extremely highly of Jamf software and credited it with making all of their goals a reality. You can get started today and start your free trial by following the link that is down in the description or by heading to Jamf.com. Thank you again very much to Jamf for sponsoring this video. The next feature is called Stage Manager. And I've already done a video on this on iPad OS and how you can use an iPad Pro with an external display as an extended monitor. But Stage Manager is also coming to the Mac with Mac OS 13 Ventura. And basically it's just a new way of working with all of your open windows. And it makes a lot of sense, especially on a smaller screen device like my MacBook Air. So here we're looking at a bunch of different windows. I got stuff beeping all over at me. Um, you can see I've got five windows open. And if you are like me, you could have a whole lot more at any given time. So what do you do? Well, you can use con uh, mission control to jump between all of your open windows and it works pretty well. But now let's go up to control center and enable stage manager. You can see that icon there. And when I click on that, moves everything to the side. So it gives me my current window here in the center. This is the center app. And I can work with it while keeping everything else open, but just off to the side. It's easier to see and focus on one window, keeping the clutter down a little bit. At the same time, this is all still movable. As I move stuff to the side, those uh, actually move out of the way, but I can resize this and I can open up multiple windows at the same time. So I could also open up maybe the clock, new clock app here, at the same time, I want to open these up together. So now I can use these both at the same time, open them up just as you normally would on the Mac, work in multiple windows at the same time. But I can also jump between them. So now I have two windows open, I can go over here, jump to podcast. It's going to switch those out, bringing podcast front and center while putting clock in the app store over there to the side. So this is really handy to split stuff up into different spaces and groups based on what you're doing. So I'm working on a video versus working on spreadsheets and documents versus just my personal time of playing games or getting on social media. Stuff like that, I can all break up into these different groups and make it a little bit easier to keep track of what I'm doing. Stage Manager is really cool. I love it on the iPad and it's great on the Mac as well. Whenever you're done, go back into Control Center and tap on Stage Manager to close it with just a click. One thing that has confounded new Mac users is that Apple always had a different designation for overall system settings. On iPhone and iPad, it was called system settings or just the settings application. On the Mac, it was system preferences. So there was never this full continuity between Apple's platforms. A lot of people who started on iPhone or iPad and moved to Mac didn't always make that connection with the system preferences. Well, with macOS Ventura, all those iOS and iPadOS users are gonna feel right at home. Apple has swapped out system preferences for just a more generic system settings. Now you can open up the system settings app just from spotlight search or go up to where you did before for system preferences and now go into system settings. It has been overall redesigned to look like it does on iOS and iPadOS. So everything is here that you'd expect to see. Your Bluetooth menu, your networks, customize your notifications, your sounds, your security preferences, wallpapers, everything that was before inside of system preferences has been redesigned, reworked, and looks great inside of the new system settings. It's a small thing, but took a lot of work and a lot of years before this finally showed up on the Mac. And I think a lot of people are going to be happy to see this improvement. Apple also introduced some new applications with macOS Ventura. Now Apple is adding three new Mac apps for the very first time. So the first up is Clock. I'm gonna go ahead and open it here from Spotlight Search. This is the Clock app. I kind of showed it off for a second before, but it's a scaled up version of what you see on the iPhone and the iPad. So you have your rolled clock, you have your alarm, stopwatch, timer, everything else that you'd expect. 
And what's really nice is that it can integrate with different parts of the OS. So if I can go ahead and start a timer, say for 15 minutes, perfect. It's counting down and immediately you see it show up there inside the menu bar. And going further, I can actually quit the app completely. It's closed in the dock and everything. That timer is still running up there in the menu bar. And when it does go off, a notification will come in that will be persistent until I actually dismiss it. Now, unfortunately, you cannot set multiple timers at one time, something still reserved to Apple Watch and HomePod for some reason, but I still like that you can have it here. Another new app is the Weather app. Go ahead and search for Weather. Again, scaled up version of mobile apps. I don't wanna get my location right now, so it's gonna pull into Cupertino. And you can see it's got this nice backdrop. It's sunny and partially cloudy outside right now. You can jump in to see some more information, some additional graphs, and look at it into the future. So great to have the weather app here on the Mac for the first time. And finally, Apple's also introducing a third app called Freeform that'll be coming out later this year after the launch of macOS Ventura. But this is basically a collaboration tool, a whiteboard tool for the Mac, for the iPad. It looks really cool and I'm excited to try it out. But unfortunately right now, I don't have it. it is not available in the current beta of Mac OS 13. Lastly, and this is a small one, but it's an improvement to visual lookup. And it does a bunch of different stuff across the OS. But what I particularly want to look at is how it can pull the subject out of photos. Yeah, so whether it's a photo that you've taken or found online, anything like that, say you have something you want to pull the subject out of. A lot of times you have to throw it into Photoshop or Illustrator or something and, and remove the background from the subject. Photoshop, Affinity, Photo, and remove the subject. But in this case, macOS can do it for you. So here I have a photo, real quick, I'm just using a quick look to pull this open, not even opening the image. And this is a dog playing Winopoly. It's actually my neighbor's dog. Um, but if I go ahead and tap the eye up there at the top, it'll actually identify this as a dog. You can see, yes, that's a Pomeranian, it's a dog breed. It identifies all of that for me. Really neat, that's using visual lookup. But if I right click on it, I can hit copy subject and it's gonna go ahead and take just the dog from that photo. So I can close, quick look, the dog is copied to my clipboard, dog, and I can paste it right here into a note. Look at that. I can just put that dog right here into a note. It is crazy. It doesn't do the perfect job. Like you can see it does a decent job with the hair and everything there. It still gets some stuff, the couch, but it's a very furry dog. This is amazingly neat. So you can pull all sorts of subjects out of photos. I implore you to go try this on your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac when you do get Apple's new operating systems because it's really cool. And there'll be a bunch of different applications for this, I am sure. So go test it out for yourself and let me know what you think. But yeah, those are my favorite new features coming in Mac OS 13 Ventura. It'll be coming out again later this fall. Let me know if you have any other questions or what you wanna see inside of Mac OS Ventura down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. So many more videos coming your way.